Rin from Hallowed Be Thy Game. And today I'm going to share with you 14 more must own hidden gems for the Nintendo Switch. Let's check it out. Welcome back to another episode of Hallowed Be Thy Game, and I want to thank you all so much for watching this entry. I have been on the hunt, and I have drummed up 14 more fantastic hidden gems for the Nintendo Switch. Again, thank you all so much for all the support on this series. Your likes, subscribes, and shares have just really just been a massive help to the channel. The growth and support has been wonderful. And again, it just lets me know that these are the types of videos that you want to continue to see. And honestly, the Switch has such an absurd amount of hidden gems. Uh, I mean, honestly, these big list videos, I mean, I can keep them coming. So please, if you want to see more, continue to like and share the video. Again, thank you so much for everything. And without further ado, let's get started. Now, Evil Tonight is a fantastic kind of retro Resident Evil. Almost think like... If Resident Evil had been on the Super Nintendo, it is a fantastic kind of isometric, very eerie, spooky pixel art game. Really, it has a fantastic depth of difficulty to it. Now, this is kind of renowned for being a tougher game. However, I do want to kind of assuade those who are not really looking for a hard challenge. There are multiple difficulty options to this, and the easiest of which will definitely help kind of ease you into the story, the world, and combat. Um, but really, it's fantastic to be able to kind of push your way through this very creepy, eerie mansion. It's excellent. I freaking love this game. And it just came kind of came out of nowhere. I just saw a tweet from the developer a while ago, and I just kind of on a whim jumped into this game, and I haven't looked back. It's fantastic. Evil Tonight, gorgeous, excellent pixel art with like a retro anime aesthetic wonderful combat and challenge I, I really love it just survival horror peak i just god i love it and i can't recommend it enough to you evil tonight absolutely a hidden gem and a must play for those seeking some survival horror now i do have a correction to make from my last hidden gems video and that is lost ruins it is on switch and i'm so happy to tell you that it runs great on switch now Again, I had to kind of run some tests because I hadn't played it on Switch originally, but everything's panning out. It looks absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous on the OLED. I freaking love it, and I'm so stoked to be diving into it further as myself. I originally played it on Steam, but I, I cannot recommend it highly enough to you. This is Metroidvania pixel art, gorgeous. I mean, look, the boss designs are chef's kiss good it's excellent really here it is a challenging metroidvania game i do want to state that however this is such a joy to play it's not an extremely long video game either and again for anybody who's kind of like off put by some of the more challenging games i mean that's really in the eye of the beholder there's some games on today's list that were kind of renowned for being tougher lost ruins is a quality game and it really just brings out the the beauty of the pixel art metroidvania genre the lighting design in this game is kind of mesmerizing it's really in my humble opinion one of the prettiest pixel art games out there it's also quality and it kind of makes you think in different ways to get through different types of stage hazards and such like that it's not all just about being able to you know hit bosses harder or be able to get through an area in a way that you wouldn't that you would normally think definitely just to be able to be aware of environmental hazards and such like that it offers a nice unique spin on the genre and really with that gorgeous pixel art if you have a switch and you're a fan of the metroidvania genre this is a must play in my book lost ruins pick it up God of Protectors, to me, is kind of like a Famicom fever dream. I do have a caveat for this game, because playing it by yourself isn't the most fun. However, if you're going to have some friends over, this is the top of the mountain for couch co-op. I freaking love this game. I really can't wait to get my brother and a few other people over to the house to play this game. But really, it kind of takes like a MOBA genre, tower defense, and be able to mash it with just this jaw-dropping Famicom art style and aesthetic. Um, this is one that is, is starting to grow in popularity. I'm starting to see larger publications kind of shout this one out. But really, for everyone out there, if you're looking for some glorious couch co-op, kind of MOBA tower defense type of game, 
This is a fantastic game to play. It's great for short burst play sessions, and it's one that's laced with enough nostalgia to be able to just kind of have a wonderful time with your friends and be able to pop this in and play it. God of Protectors, check it out. Now, Sword of the Vagrant has got a lot of love from the channel here recently, but I want to shout it out, at least for now, one more time, because Red Art Games, Video Games Plus, and Play Asia right now are offering physical pre-orders for this game. I'm not kidding. A couple years from now, you're going to be hearing about this game on every freaking hidden gems list for the Nintendo Switch. It's fantastic. I have overhyped this game. False. That actually can't be done. This game's fantastic. If you love Vanillaware, I think it goes without saying this game is for you. It essentially takes like um, Odin Sphere and Muramasa Rebirth and kind of mashes them together in just a glorious love letter to that style, to that genre. And really, it wears that inspiration on its sleeve and it just crushes it. It hits every note that I want from it. The action RPG kind of power progression to this game is excellent. You have jaw-dropping visuals. I love the character designs. I think they speak for themselves. But also you have very fun, diverse areas with extremely fun and challenging bosses at, at the end of them. This is one that's not extremely challenging unless you're going for the true ending. <laughs> wow, that boss was rough. But anyways, I cannot recommend this one enough. To me, it is absolutely a must stone it's a hidden gem and honestly if you don't care about picking it up physically it's only ten dollars on the eShop without any type of discount fan freaking tastic game and a must stone check it out jack move is a turn-based rpg that really just kind of develops its own type of visual aesthetic and art style yes it's a pixel art game but it just has this incredibly sleek and cool combat screen. And the turn-based gameplay is very intuitive and engaging. I love it. You have some button entry combos that you can let off. It has a very compact story with this amazing cyberpunk world. It really just draws me right in. If you're just kind of in love with the turn-based genre, but you're not really ready to saddle up for like the 50 plus hour experiences, Jack Move is literally the perfect game for you. It's a very compact game. It's not going to take you overly long. I would say maybe 10 hours or such like that. It doesn't overstay its welcome. I'm really hopeful to see more from this game because I love the characters. I love the combat and the aesthetic and just really that excellent, gorgeous pixel art. Really, that's what this Hidden Gems List video is about today. Just gorgeous, fun gameplay that you, that you can have a blast with in under 15 hours. Heck yeah. Jack move. Totally a hidden gem pick it up. Now for those of you out there who are kind of jonesing and missing the NES days of just kind of action platformers, Panzer Paladin is for you. Panzer Paladin takes a lot of the fun kind of gameplay and puzzle solving aspects of like Blaster Master with like a 2D action game uh, that you would have like seen in Zelda 2. Really, it is just a gorgeous pixel art aesthetic, kind of like your a uh, NES 8-bit genre. You're operating a giant mech with powerful weapons. Uh, it really just helps uh, the gameplay mechanics and such like that kind of help combat like feeling burnt out or the gameplay feeling stale or repetitive. Really was a unique experience to me. I love this type of game. It, this was essentially made for me. I love it and I really think those of you out there who are kind of open to like older retro style looking games, maybe if you just recently played like Cyber Shadow and you love that older aesthetic and design to game, definitely pick up Panzer Paladin. You won't regret it. Cathedral is definitely not pulling any punches in the challenge department. Look, this is a tough, challenging game. However, I do want to state that if you're out there and you love Wonder Boy and Castlevania and you're wanting a good challenge to kind of pit yourself against this month, definitely pick up Cathedral. Really, it is a balanced, fair game, but I do, it's not going to go easy on you. And really, though, just being able to explore and have these tough obstacles, you know, even though I wouldn't necessarily consider myself a fan of tough you know, challenging games and just for the sake of it, Cathedral did keep me hooked and I found myself losing much more time than I would expect for my play sessions into this game. The map marking system is really helpful and it's going to help ease you into these kind of like money making excursions to go out and farm some uh, resources to be able to upgrade yourself. A very rewarding experience when you finally crest a difficult hump in the game. A very much a love letter to older challenging games. One that I found myself 
falling in love with. Cathedral, a hidden gem in my book. Now, Van Brace Cold Soul is a relatively new game to me that I've just been introduced to here recently, but I am a fan of like the darkest dungeon format, and I found myself shockingly falling in love with Van Brace Cold Soul. I was expecting something a little more rough around the edges. If you haven't played Darkest Dungeon, essentially it is a roguelite. You're going to put together a party and kind of form it to your own liking. There is a little bit of RNG and luck that is involved in that. And you're going to head out into these kind of dark foreboding, very much a dark fantasy type world where you're going to try to progress and conquer this evil that's in the land. I found myself just falling in love with kind of the lore and the characters and the overall oppressing vibe of this game. If you're in the mood for kind of more spooky, eerie, dungeon crawling type games, Van Brace Cold Soul is a little bit linear <laughs> to say the least, but it is one that is extremely fun to me. I love these types of games. Um, it's something that wasn't really open to this genre before, but kind of in getting into Darkest Dungeon, it's opened me up to these types of games. And really, Van Brace Cold Soul feels like an excellent love letter to that game, and it does it justice with a very quality, excellent character designs fun combat systems and just a really rewarding progression system to where i found myself falling in love with it van brace cold soul for those of you who need a turn-based dungeon crawler roguelite look no further <laughs> okay let me see if i can pronounce this next one correctly but Kawai dethu desu look um this is comfort food gaming to me this game does not have a lot of depth and that's putting it lightly here. This is perfect for some hit and run gameplay, but really you're gonna do a lot of button mashing here. I don't know exactly what part of this game became so addicting to me. Playing as these pop singers slaughtering hordes and hordes of fans to harvest their souls, to increase their power level. Insanity this game has in droves. It is repetitive, but look, I'm telling you, just to be able to unlock the characters, progress further, it's a fun little game. I'm not going to say that you're going to be getting a ton of gameplay variety here. If you like the colors, you like the numbers, you like to progress in mindless, mind-numbing fun, Kawaii Deathu Desu is for you. It's a great hit-and-run game if you got a few minutes to play. Why not slaughter a horde of fans, harvest their souls, cr increase your power, take over the world, destroy it, who cares? Have fun with it. Check it out. Now, Toho Luna Nights is another game that knows exactly what it's hoping to achieve. It knows what it is, and what it is is a glorious love letter to Symphony of the Night. For all you Castlevania, Alucard fans out there, you're going to have a lot of fun with this. I was really taken back to kind of like the DS and PlayStation era of Castlevania games. It looks like this game had a little bit of performance issues when it came out. But from my experiences, I think a lot of that's been ironed out. There are still a little performance hiccups here and there. However, this is an extremely well-balanced and fun game. It has excellent fluid combat with some amazing boss battles and enemy designs. It's truly a well-rounded must-play for Symphony of Night fans in that genre. Really, if you are aching and missing that era of gameplay, definitely do yourself a favor and check this game out totally a hidden gem and absolutely worth picking up now let me tell you i dug deep in my memory banks for this next one this is a game that i think has always been a hidden gem now dust takes a lot of 2d action rpg gameplay aesthetics has an extremely fluid combat system and mixes it with kind of rpg elements metroidvania genre and what you get out of it is an extremely addictive ultra underrated and overlooked game this is a game that i only heard whisperings about years ago and it's fully just fallen back into total hidden gem territory but look i can't tell you enough dust is genuinely a must play now look i don't typically gravitate towards games that have like animal types aesthetics look i'm a weeb everybody tells me it in the comments i'm self-aware but i will say this this is an extremely satisfying combat system. And just to be able to pull off some of these extremely fun acrobatic moves, it's intoxicating. Totally a game that deserves a lot more recognition than it gets. And it's one that I truly feel needs to come back in some capacity. I would love to see another entry from these developers and such like that. But have you played Dust or is this game just completely lost to time? 
definitely pick it up if you haven't. And rounding out the end of today's list, I have three games for you by one of my favorite niche developers, and that is the Diabolical Mind Trilogy. Now, first up for the Diabolical Mind Trilogy is Riddled Corpse. This is a twin stick shooter, and I really feel that's where Diabolical Mind games kind of um, shined the brightest with just different combat systems and such like that. What you have here is a fun but very challenging twin stick shooter that offers some RPG elements that's going to help kind of get the ball rolling for you to be able to do it in a complete run. I am by no means incredibly good at twin stick shooters or shmups, but I really feel though that this is like the perfect hit and run type game. It is a comfort food game to where you're just going to be having hordes of zombies and monsters and just fiends of the dead attacking you and you're going to be kind of working your way through this a multi-leveled twin stick shooter to have a blast and to kind of play off of that the most recent game from Diabolical Mind and in my opinion easily the best of the bunch is Demon's Tier Plus. This is a phenomenal twin stick shooter with very approachable kind of RPG elements to be able to progress your way further down the Demon's Tier but it is so quality with just gorgeous character sprites and just uh, a very fun, kind of intriguing, engaging story that unravels itself as you make your way down the tier. Uh, it's fantastic. But one that I'm going to throw in here and I do want to offer some warning is Xenon Valkyrie Plus. I personally love this game. I consider all three to be ultra hidden gems, but Xenon Valkyrie Plus is easily the most difficult of the bunch. It is one that offers probably the least forgiving power progression loop for you to be able to kind of make your way through. However, that said, it is still a quality game that I think even newcomers to the genre can check out. I have long form plays of this on my uh, Let's Play playlist that will be on my channel homepage. But really, I can't recommend these three enough. Again, Xenon Valkyrie Plus, Riddle Corpse EX, Demon's Tier Plus, Phenomenal, and I really hope these aren't the last we've seen of the Diabolical Mind games. I truly just have a genuine great time with them. They're usually dirt cheap on the eShop, and definitely pick them up. Well, there you have it. There's another round of must-own hidden gems for the Nintendo Switch. Again, thank you all so much for the support on the previous video, and if you do want to see more of these, the best way to let me know is to like and share the video. Please consider subscribing for more hidden gems, must own RPG content, and also just my thoughts on the games that mean the most to me. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate all this channel support from the members. Again, your support and encouragement is just a, truly an inspiration. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all next time.